Okay, welcome everyone to this evening's presentation on um, initial teacher education at Aberdeen University. Uh, my name is Fraser. I'm one of the tutors um, and the recruitment coordinator at the uni. Um, what we'll do today is I'll run you through a little bit about um, the course studying at Aberdeen University, a little bit about um, entry requirements um, and the process that we go through for interviews and things as well. And then if there's any questions left at the end, um, then we've got space um, for you to type in your questions and we'll, we'll filter through them and, and try and address as many of them as we can um, once we get to the end. OK, so let's get going. Um, why Aberdeen University then as your choice of study for teacher education? And one of the things we've worked very strongly on um, is through the reaccreditation process we go through with the GTCS um, is that we keep our programme fresh and innovative. Uh, start again, innovative. Um, we look at different ways in which we can approach um, us teaching you as students um, so that we can model those ideas and then you can take them out um, into schools yourself. Um, we look at trying different ways um, of approaching our teaching um, at the university. So we're, we look at a blended approach where um, we have plenty of time working directly with you students, but you also have time um, yourselves and working in groups um, to try and go through um, and um, study through the materials for yourselves. Um, we work very closely with a range of local authorities um, all the way from Shetland down to Fife. Our staff um, work really hard um, and are really committed to making sure um, that you do well in the programme um, and that we support you every step of the way. And we focus very much on um, inclusion and collaboration of, of you as students, but also um, and how you can build that inclusion and collaboration in your own practice with your pupils when you're out in schools. Um, and we have a whole range of excellent facilities, um, including one of the libraries, um, is one of the top rated libraries um, in the whole of the UK um, in terms of its architecture as well as its actual content and delivery. So what do you need then to get into teaching um, at University of Aberdeen? And the requirements are set down by the GTCS, the General Teaching Council for Scotland, um, and they look at a range of not just academic um, uh, abilities, but also um, competencies and skills as well. Um, these are laid down in the GTCS's memorandum on entry requirements, um, and this is available for you to have a look at for yourselves um, on the GTCS website. Um, I'll run you through a little bit of an idea of those um, things that you'll need, um, and a little bit about how to try and present um, the information that you have about yourself and your competencies and skills and why you want, want to get into teaching um, as part of your application process um, later on as well. Some general guidelines um, in terms of, this, of academic abilities. Um, you need to have a minimum um, of um, a Scottish higher um, English at grade C um, or National 5 Maths at grade C. Um, or alternatively, if you've studied either before the introduction of um, NAT 5s um, or you've studied elsewhere, the equivalent to those um, in other forms of um, qualification. For example, if you do have um, come up through the English system and you've done GCSEs, um, then rather than um, a higher English, what is acceptable as an equivalence is um, either obviously A-level English um, or GCSE English. Um, however, if it's GCSE English, you need both the language and literature elements as well. Um, and for secondary applicants, we do also accept um, instead of higher English, the higher ESOL um, qualification as well. There is an expectation that you can demonstrate a competency with ICT in your practice um, and that you have some way of showing that you have the capacity to develop yourself as professionals um, in order to achieve the standards for professional registration that the GTCS um, will expect you to meet and that we will be assessing you against as part of the programme. For secondary education, um, we do have some other things that we need to consider uh, as part of the entry process. Um, the course itself is a one year professional diploma and quite often people think that the PG is being postgraduate, uh, but actually the P in this case is a, is a professional graduate diploma in education, not, not postgraduate um, diploma. Um, the minimum entry requirements for your subject area um, are a degree relevant to the subject you're studying. Um, so it doesn't need to be exactly in the subject as long as there is um, content within that degree that will allow you to teach, um, then, then that works fine. 
Um, we're not looking for honours degrees. Some universities, um, their schools of education will require um, uh, an honours degree, uh, but the stipulation from the GTCS um, is that we only require an ordinary degree and that's what we work with. Um, so it differentiates us a little bit from some of the other higher education institutes that are out there um, and that we are, we're working with the, what the GTCS are looking for rather than that higher um, requirement of a, an honours degree. Um, in terms of, of what you have to have from your subject area, it needs to be 80 credits that are relevant to the subject that you want to study. Uh, so, for example, if you're looking at studying chemistry, um, you may have done chemical engineering. Um, and as long as there are um, 80 credits of obvious chemistry within um, predominantly the sort of second year and upwards of your degree, um, then that's fine. We can um, count half of those credits from, from first year, but we tend to start looking at what you've got at the top and work our way down until um, we hit the, the, the 80 credits. Um, for example, as well with maths, um, if you've studied um, physics or, or engineering, um, then you may have enough uh, maths credits within those degrees rather than an actual maths degree um, in order to be um, academically qualified to teach maths. Um, if you are not sure whether you are academically qualified or not, um, then you can get in touch with um, Cathy Reid, who's our secondary admissions coordinator. Um, her email address is at the bottom there. Um, and she can provide some guidance as to how your qualifications sit or she can forward them to um, our subject specialists who can have a look at them um, on her behalf and get back in touch with you and let you know how your degree sits. If you don't have 80 credits um, within your subject area as it stands, um, there is the option for doing what we call a top up. So as long as you've got a minimum of 50 credits to your subject area, you can do an additional 30 um, units before you actually start the course um, in order to make sure you've got that minimum of 80. So those could be things from an open university module, for example, um, or from further study elsewhere. And you can bring those in to top up your degree content from a minimum of um, 50 up to the, the, the 80 credits required. Um, and as I said already, you need both higher English and that five maths <coughs> or the equivalents. Um, we have a fair range of <coughs> subjects offered at University of Aberdeen. We don't cover all of the secondary subjects and that's a decision that's made by, by Scottish Government. So we have a, a range that we can we can cover and um, we, we have to work within those. Um, so you can see the range there. Not all of our all of our subjects are currently open um, for study. Some of those are closed off for applications on UCAS at the moment. Um, so if you're looking for 2021 entry, um, then the subjects we still have open, um, we have biology, maths, physics, um, chemistry, um, and our modern form languages. And those are the ones that remain open. The rest are currently closed. So if you're interested in those subjects, um, then we have applications available for uh, 2021 um, and for the other subjects that are closed off, um, they will be available from application from mid-September um, for a 2022 entry. It is possible in some areas to dual qualify. So, for example, if you have a, a degree in, um, uh, for example, um, biomedical studies, you may have enough chemistry and biology um, within your degree to dual qualify in two sciences at the same time. Um, a lot of our chemical engineers have enough within their degree to do both chemistry and physics. Um, so as long as the subjects are what we, we call um, cognitively um, similar, then you can quite often dual qualify in those. Um, it's also possible sometimes, um, particularly with engineering, that you're Academic qualify, excuse me, academically qualified. I'm start again. I'm getting my tongue tied here. Academically, uh, uh, this is just not working tonight. Sorry, folks. That you are academically qualified um, for both chem uh, for both physics and maths with an engineering degree. However, you can only undertake a PGDE in one of those two areas um, because they are not considered cognitively similar. So you could, for example, do your PGDE in maths. Once you've finished um, the university study to complete your PGDE in maths, you can then do your um, probation year um, in your placement school for the year. And after that, you can then um, pick up and teach 
successful in the job, the physics alongside the maths, and then you'd be able to um, qualify with an additional teaching qualification um, in physics after having done your maths qualification without the need to come back and do another PGDE. Um, and that's just a range between you, um, the school that you're in, um, and the GTCS. Um, and that, that doesn't require you coming back to do an additional PGDE. So there are some subjects you can do qualify with while you're studying and some other ones you, you pick up um, after you've completed your probation. Um, again, if there are any queries around any of the ideas of dual qualification or how to pick up additional um, qualifications afterwards, um, then you can hold those for questions um, at the end. Some subjects have some specific entry requirements um, and those are based on um, things like for our languages, the actual um, time you've spent um, speaking that language in its native context. Um, so, for example, with modern foreign languages, um, you need to have at least 80 credits in the language you wish to teach. Um, so, for example, if it's a Spanish um, degree that you have, as long as you know at least 80 credits of that um, are um, the Spanish itself, then you're OK. Quite often people pick up business degrees um, with a language element in them. And again, if your main degree is business, but it's with a language, you may well have the 80 credits you need um, in the in the language to actually then be academic qualified to teach the language. However, there is still um, residency requirements um, that sit alongside that to show that you've demonstrated um, an immersion in that language um, and part involved in part of the, the culture of the country as well. Now, normally this would usually be um, a six month residency, the first language in three months um, in the second, but due to COVID, obviously it's been far more difficult uh, for people to pick that up. So those um, restrictions um, have led to the GTCS um, reducing the time required um, for your languages down in half. So it's three months for the first language um, and down to six weeks for the second language. Uh, you will be asked the interview to prove your competency in speaking the language as well. Um, so part of the, the um, interview will take place in the, the modern formal language that you'll be speaking. Um, for a second language beyond the first, um, as I said, the residence is reduced um, normally to three months, but currently down to six weeks. It is possible as a native language speaker um, as well to teach um, that language um, in Scotland as well. Um, so, for example, if you're a native Spanish speaker with a degree in Spanish, uh, that it may be uh, you may be eligible to teach um, that language as well. And the best way to check um, whether this is the case or not is to get in touch um, with our um, language tutor via um, Kathy Reed in admissions, um, and she'll be able to put that forward. And, and our language tutor Colin Christie um, can have a look and check whether you're. Um, degree in your foreign language will, will qualify for, for teaching over here. And um, the same is true um, for those noted for those native speakers that have a degree in another language uh, where it gets a little bit um, muddier again. Um, so for example, if you're a Spanish speaker with a German degree, then it's possible that you may be eligible to teach both um, German and Spanish. And would be aware that um, residency requirements will still apply for your non native language. Um, again, if you want any of that clarified and um, if you have any questions around it, um, you can ask them at the end um, and we'll, we'll have a look through the questions then. Um, and if you want things checked, um, again, as I say, you can get in touch with Cathy Reid, um, who will forward um, your queries to Colin Christie, our language tutor. Uh, music is currently open, um, but potentially not for much longer. So if anybody's interested in applying for, for music for a 2021 start, then I would do so very, very quickly. Um, for language, you must have at least, uh, sorry, for music, you must have at least three years um, of music study to get those 80 credits. Um, but they are looking for a range um, of different um, aspects within that 80 credits. Um, and you can see the list there. Uh, for yourselves, I won't read through them, but as you'll see, it's a, a list of um, different aspects of music that you have to be able to demonstrate within your study. Uh, for sciences and maths, while there are no specific requirements um, in these, um, you should be able to demonstrate that you have studied um, across a range of topics um, within your subject area. So, for example, uh, if you're applying for physics, then what we'd be looking for really is that you can show somewhere within your degree 
um, that you've got aspects of astrophysics, telecoms, mechanics, thermodynamics and electronics, um, so that you have a broad range of, of physics knowledge. It's not just very concentrated on a very small area. And the same is true across the rest of the sciences and maths as well. We're looking for that breadth of study um, and not necessarily that you're just focused down on one um, tiny aspect um, of what are essentially very, very broad subject areas. OK, so in terms of skills and background experience, other things that we, we look for um, go beyond just um, your academic um, record as well. So what we'd normally be looking for is the expectation um, that you have experience of working or volunteering um, in the relevant school setting um, and have an early understanding of the Scottish education system. However, obviously with COVID, um, this has been a, a very um, much up in the air kind of year um, and it's probably been very, very difficult um, for people to get a grasp of what goes on in the school and actually being in the school to see what happens. Um, some people may have had a chance to do some before COVID hit and if you can bring that in so much the better, um, but we're not looking at filtering um, for 2021, ultra, uh, 2021 entry by the amount of school experience that you've got. However, we do still expect that you'll be able to uh, interview, put forward an idea that you have an understanding of how the Scottish education system works. Um, and there are plenty of websites you can use to do a bit of research into that. So you can look at um, the Education Scotland website to give you a bit of a, a background to what Curriculum for Excellence is all about and the, the policies that, that underpin that. Um, and you can have a look at the SQA's website to look at what um, the senior phase will look like in terms of the qualifications that are available at the moment. Um, but we're also looking for skills and qualities as well. So we're looking for demonstration um, either within your written personal statement or within um, comments made in your reference or through questions that come through an interview. Um, you can show that you've got some kind of evidence in there of, of ability to work as part of a team, to show some leadership characteristics, um, that you've, you've got at least some experience or, or some genuine desire to work with young people um, that you can demonstrate your organisation, presentation and communication skills as well. So how does the application process work? Well, for secondary, um, we still, as I say, have applications open for biology, chemistry, physics, maths, um, our modern foreign languages, which include French, Spanish, German and Mandarin, um, and currently um, music, although as I say, music is very close to closing. Um, so if anyone um, on tonight is interested in, in applying for music, then you will need to do so very quickly. Um, applications are processed after we receive them. Um, they are done by um, our secondary subject course tutors. Um, so anyone applying for chemistry and physics, you'll have me having a look through um, your applications. Um, now, what we will do is as soon as we get these through, we feed back to um, our admissions team who will then set up the interview for you. Um, and what will happen when the, that email goes out is you'll be given a small selection of topics um, to choose from. And those topics are very much dependent on um, which subjects you're looking for. So they are subject specific topics that you choose from um, and you have to create a small presentation um, of around five minutes on one of those topics. Um, and then we will ask you a series of questions um, that will maybe explore a little bit more about your thoughts around the topic, um, but then go on to look a little bit more about your understanding of um, the Scottish education system and a little bit more about you um, as individuals. Um, currently, um, due to COVID, obviously our, our um, interviews are all being carried out online by MS Teams, um, and this will all be set up for you if you are invited to interview. Um, as I say, though, we are only open for the subjects at the top um, there, but um, if you're interested in any other subjects and applications for those will um, open mid September 2021 um, for a 2022 start. Um, the initial closing date um, for those new entries um, is mid January 2022, and those will be the ones that get processed first. Although often, um, as is the case now, um, you'll see we do have a number of subjects that run on um, with recruitment um, much later than that as well. OK, so what does the course itself actually look like? 
Well, we run a balanced um, mix of 18 weeks of both school experience, um, so time out in schools, um, and that's um, split so that you've got um, 10 weeks in one school and, and eight weeks in the second school, um, and 18 weeks in university as well. So it's 50% of your time in both. Um, the idea is to give you time at university so you can familiarise yourself with legislation, policy, theory, um, curriculum, content and so on. Um, and then you get a chance to take this out into schools um, and put this um, into practice and, and actually get some teaching um, in a school context. Um, now we don't tend to throw you straight in at the deep end. Um, we, we have a, a, a better structure than that. It's not just a case of the first time you get into school, that's you, off you go. Um, and we'll leave you to it. Um, and I'll explain a little bit more about how the, the school placements work um, in a minute. Um, after you've had your time out in school, you come back to your university, um, giving you a chance to reflect um, on what's going on in schools, um, to work with um, your tutors and the rest in your group, um, so you can learn from each other a bit about what goes on, what you've seen happen, um, what's gone well, what hasn't gone so well. Um, then we do a little bit more exploring around um, the sort of actual pedagogy, the actual practice of teaching um, before you're then ready to go back out into school um, for uh, further teaching practice. Um, and this pattern is more or less repeated in both semesters where you have both time in university and time in a school. Um, now the actual semester structure this year is going to be slightly different um, to how we'd normally run it again because of COVID and the, the decision making process from Scottish Government as to when we can have students on campus and how many um, and so on. So we've had a little bit of a, a change in structure, but I'll run you through that um, in, a, in a minute. And in terms of what happens in, in assessing you on the programme, there are um, two different elements. There's a, um, a university based assessment and there's a school based assessment. Um, so you have a series of written assignments um, and a small scale practitioner inquiry that will be marked um, as a university course. Um, those written ass assignments um, explore uh, the idea of social justice and inclusion um, it's within Scottish education um, and what the big picture is and what that actually means and then you take it into your school context and look about how it actually happens in your own schools and how it happens in your own practice as well. Um, and then the second round of assignments is looking at um, the small scale practitioner inquiry. So it's for you reflect on your previous teaching experience from the first semester um, during your second semester and you identify something that you you want to change about the way um, you teach or something you want to explore um, with a class in terms of the way you teach um, and you do some research into into that um, in terms of the theory um, behind it and the existing research that's there as a literature review um, and then you design a little um, inquiry to take that out and, and see how changing that piece of um, your practice actually impacts um, on um, either yourself as a practitioner or your pupils that you're working with. Um, your subject tutor um, or another visiting tutor from, from your subject area um, will also visit you out in school um, and assess your teaching practice. And at the end of your um, school experience placement, um, your mentor in school will also observe um, and assess your teaching practice as well. Or they will tend to do that um, more holistically by looking at your whole placement rather than your the single snapshot that you you demonstrate for your visiting tutor. Um, what we're looking for by the end of the programme is for you to demonstrate that you have met the standards for provisional registration as set by the GTCS. So we're not expecting you to get to the end of the first year um, of this process um, your your um, time in university and in schools um, coming out as a perfect fully fledged teacher. Um, it's really a kind of two year um, transition from from starting to, to being a fully registered teacher um, and this time that you're in university and doing your school experience um, is the first half of that um, and what the GTCS provide for us is what they call the standards for provisional registration. Um, so it's kind of the, the first step forward um, in, in making it to, the, to being a fully registered teacher. Um, once you are finished the programme and you've, you've met the standards um, and you're awarded your PGDE, um, then you'll be given a, a, pro, a probation school um, where you'll then do your following year um, as a provisionally registered um, probationary teacher. Um, at the end of that year, um, the school will assess you again 
um, and you will then um, hopefully get to the point where you're then awarded full registration um, and are now a fully registered teacher with the GTCS. So it's a kind of two two year process. Um, and if you have a look at the, the standards online on the GTCS's website, you'll see there's the the way that they structure them is, is the things that um, are probationary or provisional registered um, teachers are aiming to be able to do and how then that progresses to um, what a fully registered teacher is, is able to do. And there's there's a, a bit of a difference and, and that's what we're looking at. Um, it's your progression from the beginning of the course through to meeting those standards for provisional registration at the end of the programme. When you're at university, um, we have um, structured it so we have campus days. Now, obviously, the, as I said, the way that things will work this year for the first semester is a little bit different. Um, the university has made the decision, or at least the School of Education has made the decision that um, for a PGDE course, um, the first semester, uh, your university time will be delivered entirely online. Um, so there may be the odd exception to this, um, but the expectation is that um, your university time um, in this first semester will be um, delivered online. Now, we've been offering a blended approach to learning for, for quite a few years now. Um, and last year, obviously with COVID, we, we made this, the switch um, to delivering the whole of the, the, the course online. So we have a lot of experience about doing this um, and doing it really well. Um, in terms of the practicalities of it, it means the online delivery for university will run um, from mid-August when the course starts. Um, through towards um, the end of October where you then go out into school um, and you'll then have your school based um, experience for the second half of the, the first semester. When you're um, on campus as it were um, virtually um, for, the, for that run from mid-August to, to October, um, we have you for two days um, working with your subject tutor on a Tuesday and then working in professional studies um, on a Wednesday. Now, although that's two days of, of teaching um, online, um, the course is really a, a full time course um, and the balance of the way the, the course is structured means that those other three days um, will be given over to give you time to work on a range of self study tasks um, uh, or possibly some group tasks that you'll need to work with um, and collaborate with others um, as well. So although we have two days of direct teaching, there are three days worth um, of time, um, although how you structure that time will be, will be much more flexible and up to you. Um, so it is, although there's two days face to face, if you like online teaching, it is very much a full time course and be aware that just because it looks like we have two days um, of teaching, there is not a two day course. Um, it is, is very much a full time course. Um, so I'll say those two days are back to back and um, Tuesday, Wednesday um, and the remaining time is flexible. Now, the, the reason we've structured the course this way um, is because it gives our students flexibility um, in what they do with that time. Now, previously we had the two days separately and um, so we would have a, a one day where um, we had the professional studies and then different subject areas had different days and um, depending on um, which subject they were in. Um, other universities do things differently as well. So some other universities have you in five days for a couple of hours on each of the days. Um, and we thought because of the geographical area that we cover, um, it makes it much easier for our students if we condense all of the teaching um, that's required face to face into two days. Um, and it means that if you stay out with an easy regular commute from the university. Um, obviously, when we go back to the second semester and we're, we're back on to campus, um, then it means that you're not having to travel backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards several times. You can come up um, from quite a distance away. Um, so you're in for the Tuesday morning, um, stay over the Tuesday night, um, and then you're away um, by early Wednesday afternoon and back home by the end of Wednesday. Um, so you don't have to be away from home for any more than one night um, when it comes to the, the actual on campus teaching once we're, we're back on campus. 
Um, it does also allow some of our students the, the flexibility of maintaining some part time work. Um, and we know particularly for a lot of students that this, this can be a, a bit of a lifeline in, in terms of funding. Um, but do be aware that, as I've said, it is a full time course. Um, so you have to be aware that you still have to balance that workload of full time study um, with any part time work that you, you carry on with. Um, be aware, though, that when you're out in school experience, that is nine to five, at least nine to five, um, or the equivalent of it uh, as if you're a normal teacher, um, five days a week. Um, so you, it might be more difficult to juggle part time work um, with your actual school experience placements. Um, and again, because you're only um, having to be um, working with um, staff directly, working with your tutors directly on a Tuesday and a Wednesday, um, it might make things easier for those of you that have got childcare or other um, caring responsibilities as well. You're not having to find that for five days a week um, for those 18 weeks where um, you're doing your university study. Um, for the school experience placements, um, there are two halves to this. Um, the first experience is a 10 week block. Um, with an observation period of two weeks. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we don't throw you in at the deep end um, when you go out into schools and expect to start teaching straight away. Um, so we break you in. We have um, a two week observation period, um, which gives you time to get to know your school context, um, what all the school policies are, um, to get to know the colleagues and pupils you'll be working with. Um, you've got a chance to observe and do some team teaching um, within your department as well. So you get to know the pupils, you get to know how things work. Um, there's a set of um, inquiry tasks to try and structure this for you a bit as well. Um, and then towards the end of that second week, um, you might start building up some small group teaching or some more team teaching. Um, and maybe by the sort of Thursday, Friday of that first two week block, you'll start taking on full classes. Um, as well. Um, but the expectation is during that two weeks that you're you're not being thrown in um, to teaching from from the get go. Um, the whole point is to get you um, building up your confidence, getting to know colleagues, getting to know um, pupils um, so that you get that relationship going before you then have to start teaching. Directly following that two weeks um, is a four week build up of teaching. Um, so there's no, there's no break um, for this year between those two weeks and the, the second four weeks. Um, and these are in the same school. Um, so you'll start off by building up your full class teaching over the, the first couple of weeks and while maintaining some team teaching as well um, so that you can continue to work with um, experienced teachers who keep showing you the ropes um, while you're also doing your, your teaching for yourself as well. And it'll give you a chance to see and observe what goes on and the way teachers are approaching things um, so that you can then take what they've modelled and bring them into your own classroom practice as well. Um, during SE1A, um, you will be assessed towards the end of that by a visiting subject tutor as well. Um, and then we get a week back um, at university just to have a chance to talk over things and reflect um, before we get our Christmas break. Um, and again, that four weeks, there are clear expectations and guidelines as to how much teaching you should be doing. Um, and again, we don't throw you in at the deep end um, as you're building up your teaching um, because we don't want people burning out um, and, and we want you to get the feel for it and get the experience and build up um, as you go through those four weeks. Um, after Christmas, you'll get a chance to then go back into um, the same school you've just come out of um, for a further four weeks. Um, to put all those targets that you've identified and the things you've reflected on into practice um, from SE1A. And at the end of that um, four week block, you'll get a report from um, the your support teacher or mentor in that school as well. This more or less repeats in um, SE2. Um, so you'll go out into um, your school However, there's no observation period this time. Um, you have five weeks um, to very quickly build up your teaching. Um, and we will ex have a, a, an expectation you still get a chance to get in and observe and, and team teach um, as well. So you're taking those ideas of new colleagues into your practice um, and putting those um, into um, your approaches as well. And again, um, it, Towards the end of SE2A, you'll get assessed by a visiting subject tutor. 
And again, there's a, a week for a return to university at the end of that um, to get you ready for um, SE2B and um, be given time before the, the Easter break as well. Um, your final block in SE2B back in the same school um, as SE2A um, is three weeks uh, where you're basically hitting the ground running and just picking up again from where you left off more or less. Um, and again, it's all about reflecting and trying to put into place the, the targets that you've picked up, uh, things you need to work on from SE2A. Um, and during this um, block, you'll also be carrying out the small scale practitioner inquiry we talked about earlier. Um, and at the end of the whole thing, again, you'll be um, assessed by um, your supporting teacher or mentor in the school as well. The application and interview process. Um, our numbers are, um, as always, um, as I've said, regulated by um, Scottish Government. Um, so not only the subjects that we offer, but how many places we can offer um, are regulated. It's not, not our choice how many um, places we get to allocate. Um, that's given to us. Now, our allocation for this year is about 190 um, across all of our PGDE subjects. Um, and we have had an awful lot of entries this year. So it does mean that getting through um, and getting offered a place is really tough. Um, so if you do get offered a place, you've done really, really well this year. Um, and as much as we would love to take everyone, we don't have that option. As I say, our, our numbers are um, limited, so we do have to, to be very um, careful with, with how we go through the, the, the interview process um, and who we're putting offers out to. Um, so if you do get an offer, um, you have done very well this year. Um, so just a reminder of what's required for your application, um, a minimum of an ordinary degree in your subject area with at least 80 credits relevant to, to that subject, um, a NAT5 maths at grade C, uh, a higher English at grade C um, or equivalents of those. If you are missing either the NAT5 maths or the higher English, um, then the university do offer access courses um, as well that you can, you can explore if you are missing one of these um, two requirements. Um, so you can have a look online for those. Um, if you need your um, degree content checked, um, as I say, um, Cathy Reid and Admissions um, will be able to forward queries about your degree content um, to our subject tutors to check for you. The actual UCAS application itself, um, you are required to have both a personal statement and a reference. Now, to give you an idea of the kind of things we're looking for in these, um, for your personal statement, think about why it is you want to teach. Um, what we're looking for is, is you to kind of demonstrate something in here that shows a genuine desire for why you actually want to be a teacher. Um, so you could refer back to things you've done in the past that's maybe made you interested in teaching. Um, or maybe you know people who, who teach and it's, it's something that you've, you've seen or um, happening or, or been inspired to do. Um, so have some idea of what it is that, that makes you want to be a teacher in there. And try and bring through something that shows what skills and qualities you've got that are relevant to teaching. Um, if you've got any relevant experience you can bring through. Um, and throughout the whole thing, try and make links to teaching and education. So it's really important that when you come to do your personal statement, you, you've had a look um, and seen how education works in Scotland. Um, even if it's just having a look at um, the Education Scotland website to see what Curriculum for Excellence is all about, having a look at the SQA's website and seeing how the, the, um, uh, the actual assessments are structured there. So have an idea of how the education system looks and how what you can bring in terms of your skills and qualities and experience can feed into that. For your um, referee, it's a good idea that um, there's someone who knows you well enough and um, that when it comes to writing your reference, um, they can reflect on the skills and qualities that, that you've demonstrated in your context um, that you're coming from um, and how that those could um, then perhaps we apply to, to teaching as well. Um, so think about who you're choosing to write your reference um, and, and what they can um, provide that will help support your application. Um, as I say, for 2021, um, the course is starting mid-August. So those um, that are um, wanting to start this year, um, then your applications do need to be in as soon as possible. Um, as I say, for music, it is very, very close to being closed. I, that might even happen this week. 
Um, so if you do want to apply for music, it, it's imperative that it is done really, really quickly. Um, for next year for the 2022 applications, um, as I say, they open um, for applications from mid-September um, and they will remain open um, through to mid-January um, for most of the subjects um, and beyond that for others as well. OK. Once we've processed your application and it, it looks good, um, then you'll be invited to an interview. As I say, the, pres the, the interview takes um, the format of two separate bits. Um, there's a five minute presentation um, on a relevant subject that you would choose from um, a list um, that, that focuses on, on your subject area. Um, and then we'll have a series of questions that explore your understanding of education and a bit about you as well. Um, we do try our best to keep um, our interviews quite conversational and relaxed, uh, but obviously this is always easier said than done with interviews. Um, but we do our best to try, try and keep you relaxed and, and try and keep it fairly conversational. Um, so don't worry too much uh, our interviews if you're having to, to stop and ask questions. Um, if, you, if you want to, to bring something up as we go through, then you know for most of the, the tutors, that's fine. Um, to prepare for your interview, make sure you research um, your chosen topic well. Make sure that you're showing uh, the depth of preparation that you've done by trying to make links um, to relevant policy and theory um, as well as what actually happens in schools. So try and speak to people, um, speak to people who know, try and speak to, to teachers, um, get in touch with schools and try and find out um, as much as you can in preparation for your interview. Um, the idea is to try and contextualise what you're doing as well. So try and make links and give examples um, of what's in the curriculum and what happens in the real world. So this will show again that you've had a look um, at what's actually out there in terms of what the Scottish system looks like. What does our curriculum for excellence or our national qualifications actually look like? And how does that fit in with the real world around us? Um, don't be afraid to big yourself up. Um, and it's obviously something that's you know quite difficult to do sometimes, but you know you will be applying for this with a lot of skills and a lot of experience, a lot of strengths um, that you um, can bring to teaching. Um, so try and fit those into your interview somewhere and try and pick yourself up a bit. Um, but at the same time, try and show an awareness that there are things that you will need to work on. Um, you know, obviously not everyone that's applying for teaching has had that experience to be in and, and teach. Um, so in that case, you know, what kind of things will you need to work on when you're, you're getting into a classroom? What, what are your kind of priorities going to need to be there? Um, but remember, it isn't all about you. Teaching is about pu putting our pupils at the centre of what we do. So although you're talking about you and your skills um, and what you can do, think about how they will work for the pupils you'll be teaching as well. Um, funding, um, obviously very important for, for us, is how, how you actually um, fund yourself through um, the course. Um, now, there's a, a range of different funding as well uh, available depending on your own circumstances. Um, it may have you may have to privately fund, um, but there are some other options out there as well. Um, the Students Awards Agency for Scotland um, can provide fees um, for Scottish based students, depending on um, what you've previously done um, in terms of, of your qualifications. Um, you may still be eligible for um, your fees being paid by um, SAS. Um, for those um, in the STEM subjects, um, or at least some of the STEM subjects, from what we've still got open, it will cover physics, chemistry and maths. Um, depending on a, a fairly strict range of criteria, you may be eligible for the STEM Bursary Scotland um, Award, which is a £20,000 bursary over 10 months. Um, but there are set criteria that you need to meet and continue to meet after qualification. Um, as well. So you need to be able to commit um, to not only doing the course and completing the course, but committing to stay in teaching a number of years um, afterwards in order to be eligible for um, the STEM bursary um, award. Uh, be aware if you do accept the STEM bursary and you then leave teaching before the end of the, the tie-in, um, you will be expected to pay it back. And um, so it is a commitment um, in that case. 
if you're applying from elsewhere in the UK, um, the, the, stu the study bursa that's normally offered to postgraduate initial teacher training uh, in England, Wales and Northern Ireland uh, will not apply if you are applying to a Scottish institution. Um, if you are looking for what actual fees will be, um, there's a link at the bottom um, there that will take you through um, to the, the current um, fee levels for each of the courses. Okay, um, that's me finished talking at you. Um, so I'll now um, leave it over to um, questions. Uh, now, let me drop out of this somehow. There we go. Uh, da, 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 da. Bring this up so I can see questions. Okay. Okay, so let's have a look at some questions. Um, okay, I'll scroll down and find one. Okay, so first one we've got here. Um, Job opportunities for RMA teachers after qualifying. Um, you will be guaranteed at least a year um, of um, teaching after you've qualified um, through the teacher induction scheme. Um, now, there are RME places available, um, whether they're, they're up here or they're, they're in other places um, nationally, um, I'm not too sure, but we are only allocated um, places that are forecast to be required. Um, so if we have places to take people, it's because there will be a future need um, for RME teachers. Um, so you may not be seeing any advertisers now, um, but they do often come through in waves as well. Um, so, you know, keeping your, your eyes peeled, um, particularly through My Job Scotland, which is where most of the council jobs um, are advertised, and um, we'll, we'll let you see the ones that are, are coming through. Um, the hope is that semester two um, should return to Tuesdays and Wednesdays on campus. Yes, that would be correct. Um, that, that's our plan um, and fingers crossed that it all, all goes to plan um, because I, I know I for one am definitely missing actually being being on campus and, and working directly with, with students. Um, um, best documentation to send to confirm the award of a degree. Um, if you are at uh, have previously studied at University of Aberdeen and um, then um, our admissions team can get your transcript directly from there. Um, if you studied elsewhere, then a copy of your transcript is what um, admissions would ideally like to send us um, so that as subject tutors, we can then go through the actual individual courses and the number of credits for each of those courses. Um, so hopefully that answers your question, David. Um, Uh, you're holding a test that's supposed to achieve the English qualification while studying for PGDE. Um, yes, um, so that's correct. Um, you can um, accept um, and start the course um, in August while um, still completing um, the English qualification. Ideally, um, I think the first exit point for the Access English course is, um, I'm trying to remember, either towards the end of September or the middle of October. Um, and ideally, if you can have it completed um, by that first exit point, that would be great. Uh, but you can hold it through um, from what I remember and until the, the February exit point. Um, if someone qualifies the PGD in chemistry with science, then after completing the pressure you're teaching in the schools, there's kind of great ability to take up to profits. Um, yes, um, if you have the academic credits within your degree, so those full 80 credits in geography, um, as well as 
um, the 80 credits required to do the chemistry, then yes, you can do your PGD in chemistry. Um, you can then complete your probationary year in chemistry, then you can work with the school to start teaching geography um, and, and work with um, them to work through um, a year's worth again um, of teaching and be assessed essentially on the job um, to, to get the additional teaching qualification rather than having to come back and do the PGDE again. Um, was the library closed during the lockdown? Um, there was restricted access to the library um, for quite a long um, period through this um, year as well. Now, most of the material that we have used as course books have been made available digitally as well, um, Amy. So even if um, the library was to end up closed again, um, as far as I remember, pretty much all of our core textbooks and plus some of the other ones um, and a whole load of the journal articles and everything else you'll need um, are available through the digital library service as well. Um, so you won't need to worry about access to books physically um, because you will be able to access them digitally. Um, history and modern studies is a possible combination. Yes, so um, any combination of the three um, social subjects that we offer, history, modern studies and geography um, are possible depending again on your academic um, qualifications and the minimum of 80 credit requirement within those. Um, so yes, history and modern studies is something you can dual qualify. Um, and and most, of the, most of the cases, a, a, a huge quantity of our um, social subjects, students are finishing with two um, dual qualifications. So they'll end up with a combination of history, modern study and geography by the end of it. Um, Shannon um, accepted into just drama and just offer everything that makes just wonder when to apply for SAS for the academic year. Um, you have achieved your conditions. As soon as you have achieved your conditions, if you let admissions know that you've achieved your conditions um, and then that will switch over an unconditional offer and you should be able to apply for, for SAS um, as soon as you can um, really. Um, so as, as soon as you've accepted that offer, yeah, you should be able to, to apply for your SAS funding. Um, is your placement likely to be close to your term time address? Um, you, if you're moving to Aberdeen, then the way the system works for placements is that you will be given a placement that is normally a maximum commute of up to 90 minutes away from the address that you're going to use um, for your placements. So if you're moving up to Aberdeen um, and you use that as an address on the system, um, then what will happen is you'll be allocated normally a, 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 a school that's within a maximum commute of 90 minutes um, from that address. Um, if you wanted, though, there's nothing to stop you adding that second address where your, your home address would normally be, um, and you could have um, the flexibility then of having either a school within 90 minute commute your term time address or the 90 minute commute from your home address. Um, it's entirely up to you. Um, if you would like it to just be that one address that you're using um, for when you're on campus for your term time address, um, then that's something we'll work with um, as well. So if you put um, on the form, what happens is after you're, you're offered a place, you will receive um, a form that's used to um, inform where we allocate people, uh, students for our school experience. Um, so if you put your term time address on that form, then that's the one um, that we will use. Um, well, I'm just fell pregnant halfway through the course. Can you defer the course? And um, what therapy are you eligible for? Um, well, if you are on the course um, and you want to suspend your studies because you're pregnant, then that's something we can work with and we'll work out what the exit point is for you. Uh, and then what will normally happen is you will rejoin um, the course um, the following year, um, or in some cases, obviously, if, if, if you're pregnant, maybe the year after that as well, and um, that will allow you to, to take that break um, and come back to, to study again. Um, now, obviously, you're you're not being paid for the, the course, um, so there is no maternity pay. Um, however, in terms of um, fees and things, what will happen is your, your fees will just be rolled over into when you start again, um, so you wouldn't end up having to pay the, the fees for both years. You'd only pay um, the fees for the first part and then the second part is, is normally how it would work. Okay, um, 
Next one, uh, the guarantee of the one year contract mentioned earlier is after the first year or after the second year, so after you're fully qualified or the qualifying year. Um, so what happens here um, is you will do your one year of your university study um, to obtain your PGDE, um, and then you're guaranteed um, a one year place on probation um, directly following the completion of your PGDE. Um, and that's through what's called the teacher induction scheme. Uh, now at the end of that year, um, you will then have to find um, employment yourself. Quite often um, it, you'll find that once you've got that year's experience, there are other posts opening up um, as you go through towards the end of that year that you can start applying for. Um, and in some cases um, it happens that the, the school that you're in for your probation um, actually require you to stay on anyway and, and take a role there. And that sometimes happens too. Um, but the year um, that you're guaranteed is the year following the completion of the PGDE um, for your probation year. Um, and after that, it's then um, going on to find your, your own position after that. Um, in science subjects, how do practicals work? Will I be responsible for risk assessment centre during my school sessions? Yes, um, you will, but at the same time, um, you obviously work with the school staff that are there. Um, and the majority of the practical work you will be doing will already have been risk assessed um, and there'll be risk assessments in place for those. Um, however, if you want to try anything new or different, um, then you can work with the staff and the science faculty um, to look at carrying out a novel risk assessment um, for that new experiment. Um, so obviously you're not going to be necessarily um, risk assessment trained um, to do these yourself, but the staff there will help and support you um, if you're doing any novel risk assessments, uh, but otherwise, like in any other practical work and um, that happens in school, you're expected to engage with existing risk assessments will already be in place before you do any practical work. Um, do students tend to do the probation year or can they spread us over a longer time frame? Um, yeah, there is an option to do what's called the flexible route um, when you finish. Um, now you don't, it doesn't, you don't have to take up the offer of the teacher induction scheme. Um, you can go through what's called the flexible route instead. Now this gives you a couple of different options. Um, it means you can either, rather than doing um, your one year um, for, on the TIS and your, and your probation place, that way you can apply for jobs before you get to the end of the programme um, and get a permanent post perhaps or a longer term contract that might be up to 23 months. Um, and rather than going down the teacher induction scheme route, you take that um, option instead. Um, you might decide that working full time um, on the on the teacher induction scheme isn't for you, so you'd rather work part time, um, in which case um, you can do that. Um, or it may be that you need a year out for other reasons before you then take up um, your probation time. Any of these options can be covered by um, what's called the flexible route. Um, and it's just a way of um, putting in that year's worth of time, um, but in a different way. Um, so you might do it by um, working um, half time essentially and do it over two years um, or you might take a year's break and then you might do one year full time um, somewhere else um, or any combination of these things in between. Uh, but you have up to five years on the flexible route from when you finish your PGDE to putting in your one year's worth um, of time. Um, so you've got that five year time frame in which you can you can work through um, and do your probation um, rather than doing it um, on the teacher induction scheme. Um, so if that answers that question well. Um, David, um, interested in earning PhD in secondary subject, biology and chemistry, eight credits come from two years to four years each. Would this be enough to qualify for a secondary subject in chemistry? Um, David, what I'm going to suggest you do um, is rather than me trying to work this out off the top of my head, if you could email that across um, to me directly, um, then I'll, I'll, well, I'll type in my email address here. Um, so if you've got your transcripts, and if I can even type, that would be helpful. Um, so that's my email address. If you send across transcripts, David, I can have a look at those um, separately and that would give me a, a better idea of, of how things are, are sitting for you and we can have a look at doing it that way. Okay. 
Yeah. Right, I think I've hit the end of the questions. Have we got any more? OK, no more questions. OK, well, thank you everyone um, for having a, a listen to me um, and for all your questions. Um, again, if there's anything you want to know more about in terms of um, either general admissions um, or your degree qualifications, um, then you can get in touch with Cathy Reid at admissions um, and she'll forward them um, to me um, directly. Um, or the relevant subject shooter to have a look at.